June 25th, Orléans. Dead France is returning to life. Our army swells with new recruits. In olden times, men swore fealty only to their particular lord. Now, we fight not for the insolent lords and ladies, but for France. For all of us, Joan is France. There is no distinction in our minds. The Dauphin himself has arrived in Orléans. Never have I seen such a celebration. France needs a king, so we must escort the Dauphin to Reims, where he can be properly crowned. Yet, the city of Reims is dangerously menaced by the Anglo-Burgundian army. The cities of Troyes and Chalon also bar the way. Job commands that we must liberate all three cities before the coronation, and we eagerly seek to fight. Oh, il est rax. Certes. Libet. Certes. Oh, il est rax. Libet. Certes. Pérax. Libet. Prêt. Oil. Libet. Oil. Pérax. Oil. Joan of Arc is attacking our camp. Do not let her cross the river. French are trying to cross the river. Okay. Maro. Que fait? Maro. Oh, 
them. Qui fait minéo? Oui, Minio, prêt, Maro. Oui. Oh, 
Oui. Minio. Minio. Que fait Pastisor.
Pastisor. Oui. 
investisseurs. The English and Trois have been defeated. Now the coronation of the Dauphin can proceed! As we rode into Reims, a sea of peasants and lords knelt before Jerome. Some even now to kiss her horses of rights. Cannon thundered, and a thousand flags danced in the breeze. In the enormous palace, the Dauphin knelt before the Archbishop and rose as King of France. Prayers, anthems, and sermons filled the great chateau. Interspersed among perfumed dukes and ladies were 
tattered soldiers from our army, many still bearing wounds. Joan herself was at the king's side, as was her bedraggled battle standard. Despite the celebration, I know in my heart that this war is far from over. Our fathers and grandfathers died fighting the English. Joan gives us hope, but I do not know if hope is enough to ensure victory.